when you're healing and when it's it's a very selfless, selfish, selfish, not like you're doing something bad, but just it's just a, it's a selfless about you place. And that's what it gets to be. There's a false notion in our society. I'll take care of you if you take care of me. But the truth is, if we actually take care of ourselves first, only then can we change our life, change our homes, change our cities, our relationships, and eventually change the world. For those of you who appreciate the holistic lifestyle, you've come to the right place. Your host, Emmanuel Zavallos, is a certified emotion and body code practitioner and certified group energy facilitator. You are now listening to Healing the Healer podcast. This show is brought to you by Heal, the social media platform for those who love the holistic lifestyle. Are you tired of sharing holistic tips and getting banned or going to Facebook jail for sharing the truth? Are you tired of all the Facebook political drama? Tired of people who don't support energy healing growth? My wife Jess and I created a social media platform that was meant for people who love social media, communicating with like-minded people, and love learning hacks from other wellness practitioners. It's free to join www.haveempathyandlove.com. Plus, every week you have the option and choice to opt into a cutting-edge healing group where you get energy healing for seven days straight. Again, it's free to join www.haveempathyandlove.com. All right. Well, welcome to Healing the Healer podcast. I'm so excited. We have a very special guest here. Her name is Karina Pearl. And uh, I want to do a, a good introduction for you. So that way, you know, everyone knows who you are and kind of why you're here. And so um, I know you and your husband have been married for almost five years, mm-hmm. uh, lived together in Hawaii most of the time. You went to BYU Hawaii to study. Uh, now you live in St. George and you have a son who is, like you said, the uh, true light in your lives. Um, his name is Braven. He's 14 months. So you've been on your healing journey, which led you to your career. You said that you've met lots of amazing people on the way. Uh, you owned a franchise a physical therapy wellness center, and now you're an immune system coach guiding people to help their immune systems work for them and not against them. And so you got to run a small home clinic um, that brings you a lot of joy. And so I'm excited for you to be here. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Great. So tell me a little bit about kind of your path. Well, actually, let's start off with this. I always start off with uh, gratitude, you know? Mm -hmm. So what are maybe uh, three things that you're very um, uh, grateful for? Um, What what are three things? Well, I'm grateful for my faith in God. Um, I feel like that is the light that lights my path. And I'm grateful for my husband. He's the love of my life, my partner, and all that I do. And the gift of being a mother. I love being a mom to my baby. That's great. Yeah, I think I think it's so special. Like, what's really interesting to me is when I read books about you know near death experiences. It's never about like, oh, I wish I would have spent more time in my career. It's always like family is like the most centralized thing that they they're fond of or that they love or that they miss. Or I wish I would have spent more time. So it's just interesting how like your gratitudes are all about family, you know. And so, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, how did um, you know, how did you go through this journey? Where did your journey begin where you're like, hey, you know what? I really care about people's immune system. Uh, because I, again, it's kind of, um, uh, I grew up with two oncologists, Peruvian oncologists, you know? And so they were they were not thinking about people's immune system. My mother was, because she was kind of a wellness doctor, you know? But um, immune system is not the first thing they think about. Otherwise, they wouldn't provide chemotherapy, which lowers the immune system, and then mm-hmm. things get worse, right? Mm-hmm. So for you, um, where did your where did your healing journey start? Well, I grew up thinking I was going to be a professional dancer. <laughs> I was going to be a backup dancer to like Prince Royce or Daddy Yankee. That was like <laughs> what I really believed was going to be my path. And honestly, what led me to the wellness journey was my own healing journey. Um, I was really sick when I turned really 25. It felt like my, as the months went by, my health just really began to deescalate. And so I met my very first healer, and he presented a lot of possibilities and opportunities and things I had not really understood about emotions and the body and sickness. And that was really the first time I saw that 
what I went through in my life and the things that I had not taken care of and my pain had a lot to do with what was manifesting physically. And that, re- that humble beginning is what really led me to the big opportunities I get to enjoy today. So were you, when you first were approached with these type of modalities, were you immediately open-minded or did it kind of take a little bit of time to say, you know, cause, cause I know sometimes, um, out of desperation, you know, you have to be open-minded, but sometimes, you know, I feel like the greatest movies of people who become like Superman are always in denial of things, or they're just kind of like questioning things, you know, were you always were you quick to be open or did it take a little bit of time to kind of accommodate yourself? Did you have maybe some upbringing things or philosophies that maybe contradicted some things? I mean, how was that part? (laughs) Um, There, I feel like the part that helped me to be open to it was that I was tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. And I knew that the things that I had been doing were not sticking or effectively giving me that liberty I was craving and hungering for. And then there was that pool side of I'd never really understood that that feelings were never, feelings alive were never gone. They were just buried within my body, within my soul, within my being, you know? And so, yes, there were things at the beginning, but I was there ready to receive. And so I feel like that was helpful. Yeah. And it's, um, how about your parents? Were they always like, um, when they saw you kind of going through this journey, cause see a lot of listeners that are, are listening, tuning in, they're either practitioners or they're clients of people that provide energy medicine work. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of them, like I said, um, in the scriptures, it talks about how you're not a prophet in your own village, mm-hmm. you know? And it seems like, you know, the biggest critics are your family, but then the biggest people that reward you are your family. You know, they mm-hmm. they, they, they don't support you in the beginning, but they're the ones at the finish line saying, we always knew, you know, this mm-hmm. was the right path, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Were your parents very supportive or were they questioning what you were doing? I didn't give them the opportunity to choose. I left my own home <laughs> town and I started it when I moved to Hawaii. And so I didn't turn to them until I was ready to have certain conversations with them. But I didn't make those moves until I had done my work. So I would do my work, my journey to a, to a, an extent. And then when I was ready to make that connection or bridge that relationship or help heal that relationship, help show them who I really was, then I would open it a little bit. But it it was never a conversation about I was looking for permission. Mm -hmm. It was they had already done so much for me, and I wanted them to see that I was more than what I thought that I was. That makes a lot of sense. I I was also thinking about it, too, that it can get very sensitive when the people that cause you the most trauma are not supportive it, it would hurt me a lot. Like if I think about my own life, I would say if my dad was a narcissist, let's just say, right? And and I'm trying to go to a healer to assist me with narcissism abuse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then obviously my dad's like, what are you doing? You know, um, that would hurt me even more. It's like, wow, the person, the culprit of what caused me all this trauma is not really favorably wanting me to move forward. But I feel like that's the case with a lot of people in this world is maybe they're waiting for permission when I think the way that you talked about it is it's better to go get your own experience. And then now you have something tangible that you can come back and say, look what's happened to me. And then that makes you kind of more fortified in your beliefs, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because then I feel like a lot of my childhood trauma came from home, you know? And so the work that I finally found later on, um, took me from that victim place into a place of personal power and choice and what I was really designed for. So when I released the pain and the emotions, I chose to receive the lessons and give space for all of the learning. And that's what I took to my family. That's great. And so they, so basically they saw more, every time you came back probably to communicate with them, they saw a more refined version of you. And they were probably saying like, Hey, something's different about you. Or, um, cause I feel like the, 
the family killer is reactivity, in my opinion. The the thing that causes more family issues is the trauma that we hide underneath the rug mm-hmm. and then we just explode because we're just trying to – we're hold, our body is technically holding its breath. And as soon as something comes, it, it triggers it. And then now you're acting – you're really not acting like yourself anymore. So – for those of you who are listening and let's say you're off, oh, you know, and maybe you're like, oh, it's so hopeless. My relationship with my son or my relationship with my partner, there's no way to save it. I want to commend you the fact that you even have a relationship because, you know, the trauma can really take the driver's seat and put you in the side and it's on autopilot. And you think that because the way you acted, that's you. It's not you. Mm-hmm. You're you're beneath that. You're a healed person full of light and you just haven't seen the best version of you because you've let other people take the wheel. I know you probably believe what I'm saying right now because I see you nodding. Um, what's your experience with that, with this whole idea of like reactivity and how it sometimes could take the wheel? And I always tell people too, I'm like, even if you read the best Tony Robbins book, mm-hmm. you know, but if you're fighting with your wife, try to think about page 37 in a Tony Robbins book. You're not going to think about it. You're just going to throw that book outside the house and you're in reactive mode, you know, mm-hmm. hard to turn someone off from a trigger, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, but what's your, what's your experience with that? With like, how have you helped out clients who maybe you're like, whoa, they're very reactive here. They're very reactive here. This is causing stress and this is definitely lowering their immune system, right? That's the, the biggest thing, excess cortisol, you know, those are the things that cause the immune system to kind of get lowered. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what's been your experience with people who are like, reactive and maybe that causes issues with their immune system. How have you helped them out? Well, I love the idea of working cohesively. You know, like I said in to you earlier and in my bio is that I met a lot of amazing people along my path. And I feel like when I move forward in service and in giving, I I give back to what they poured into me. And so when it comes to emotions or when it comes to those I feel like if there's a trigger, it's an unresolved emotion. It's an unresolved pain in their life that either they, we, I have pushed down, you know, and just not ready to face it. Um, And I refer them out. I refer them to my mentors. I refer them to those who truly are a vessel for that place. And then I partner with them in the way that I help some of the physical elements, but I feel like because I understand all the facets of our wholeness Mm -hmm. is what gives my clients the full result of where they really want to be. Right. It makes sense. So what you're saying is um, acknowledgement of the, the mental body, physical body, spiritual body, like there's different versions or like layers of us Mm -hmm. and they all have to be tended to. Uh, I'm very similar too. I um, have a great friend, Dr. Scott Warner, who is here in St. George and he's an herbalist, you know, and I tell people, I'm like, yeah, I can get rid of your parasites and perhaps your fungal stuff. Energetically, I can kind of give it a little punch as Dr. Brad would say, kind of like punching him in the face. And it kind of helps with the detox a little bit, but you might need some neem leaf or something to kind of consume to fully (laughs) detox it and somebody else can assist you. So I think you and I are in the same level with that. It's like, hey, if there's someone that specializes in something, like use this coupled with me and we're going to work together to help you out. Mm-hmm. That's kind of your method. Yes. Yeah. So that's really awesome. Um, when it comes to the immune system, I know you you were going to share some really cool facts um, about like, uh, you know, how our body works and, and, and everything like that. I, I know the listeners are probably interested in hearing about it. So I just wanted to kind of put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, just one quick thought was, so as we talked about this physical trauma that my body really chose into, you know, with the things that I've experienced growing up, and a lot of it was sexual trauma. And that was a lot of unforgiveness and resentment and anger that I really carried with me most of my life. And yes, did I have many, many moments of faith and love? Absolutely. But there was always this level of that unforgiveness or that sadness or that anger that I could never fully shake off no matter how much I prayed and studied. And um, that moment that I said that my body really broke down. I had two autoimmune diseases. Um, I struggled with getting pregnant. Uh, My body wouldn't ovulate, wouldn't have a period. It was like my hormones through all of that really took a stump. 
Mm-hmm. And so, um, and then with mental health and like moments of depression and anxiety, and I feel like my immune system didn't fully work for me. My my cells had not the energy to do all the things that my body wanted to do to live, you know? Right. And as I really did that work, um, it really was a, a, a year to two years of just doing laundry and, and cleaning out stains. And, and that work made, helped me get to the point where I was ready for more of the, the physical, you would say the molecules, the supplements, the therapies that helped my cells, my immune system start working better for me. And, and then I was able to get pregnant and I, my body doesn't have I've gotten a blood work test. I don't have any sign of my autoimmune diseases anymore. And my blood levels are amazing. And so um, that's how I found. So I found the emotional helpers (laughs) and um, native healers. And then I found modalities and I found products and I found regimens. And that's what I've incorporated all along in my wellness center. So you have, um, so that's, first of all, I just want to share, it's so key that you said something like I was doing this for two years I I find it so fascinating with like how how much time we spent accumulating trauma and it takes time to heal we we live in a very microwave society we want to be healed like yesterday you know and it's just not the case It, it takes time it takes um patience it takes forgiveness to yourself and others and um to process the emotions that were never processed you know it takes time and so Um, for those of you who are listening, some of you guys might be frustrated and saying, oh, I thought I'd be here by now, you know, or I I thought I'd be over this by now, you know, but, um, I was going to ask you real quick, you have the tenacity for, to do this for two years. It's not, it's not easy. Um, what kind of kept you going and where you're like, I'm not here in a year, uh, I'm not here in six months yet. So, uh, should I quit or is this not working? Like what made, what type of mindset did you have that you're like, I'm going to continue this. Um, until the wheels roll out what, what was that so that way listeners can kind of benefit from that i feel like as i began to believe that intention was a powerful gift to me that if i truly was opened and believed and had a desire to let go or to be whole or to be the best version of myself that somehow the universe and God and all these things, whatever you believe in, um, really begin to help you on that path. And you begin to have very specific opportunities to help you. One, One specific thought that came to my mind when you asked that question was, although it took a couple years, um, I would say to feel like, not that I've arrived because I feel like it's a journey. 100%. But to feel like I could breathe and it wasn't like constant triggers um, is the fact that when you start doing the things that speak to your soul, and for me is when you start doing emotional healing, you meet your body where you're at in that form. The moment you're ready to let go, it's actually very quickly. It, what takes time is the processing and allowing yourself to share that with someone else who's going, who you've trusted to guide you through this process. Trust yourself that you're going to be safe going over those experiences or trusting that person that they will help you without having to repeat every detail. And I think there's this moment, this magical moment. That makes me. that I experienced that choice was enough, that I could choose out of pain as quickly as I chose into pain. And the moment I had support experiencing that, and in one moment I could choose what it felt like to be a victim and to be angry and to be lost and to feel the things that I felt, and then to take the the 
the opportunity just to try what it was like to even imagine or to express in some moments repeating the same story, but from a place of power, from a place of choice and to, to feel those first few times feeling that liberty, that taste of liberty and peace and wholeness gave me the courage to keep going and to keep allowing people to love me and to show me a better way and to keep trusting. Like, I, I feel like the tears for me come from a place of my prayer that my words do make it to someone that is waiting for that moment for themselves to hold on and to receive all that really is possible for them. Yeah. I, I thank you for sharing, by the way, this is a, uh, I'm glad we're getting more personal because, you know, a lot of people like to know who's the person behind um, you're providing all this service for people, you know, and helping people out their immune systems. But I really feel like the heart of you providing these services comes from a place of like overcoming uh, different things in your life, you know? And, and so I, um, I've just noticed that um, in regards to, 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 to prayer, it really reminds me of that, uh, that funny story of, <laughs> I'm just going to wait for God to help me you know, and uh, don't rescue me, you know, the, the, the water's rising in the building, you know, it's like, hey, don't rescue me because God's going to save me, you know, it's like, and this boat comes, you know, to, have you heard that story? Mm -hmm. The boat comes to come rescue and this is, no, don't worry about me. This, you know, the helicopter person comes and this is, no, don't worry, God's going to rescue. Hey, where were you, God? You know, it's like, hey, I sent this person to you. I sent this person to you. And I really feel like it's no coincidence that these people are arriving to assist, you know, it's like the statue in Russia of, of uh, Jesus. There's a a uh, statue where there's no hands, you know, and a lot of the people that have helped you out, it's almost like they're his hands that, that are trying to reach you uh, in times of struggle, you know? And so, um, yeah, so thanks for sharing. I, I was curious, um, as you're going on your journey, did you have any type of speed bumps, you know? Because like I said, this journey could be, It's I, I remember this um, meme where it talks about how people think I think someone used like a like a tarot card as an example, but it showed the little happy baby on the lion. You know, it's like this is what healing is presumed to look like. You know, but it's more of these people kind of like there's a fire in the tower, and like the people are like falling out of the tower. It's like this is more of what healing kind of looks like sometimes. It's not this like happy baby on a lion. You know, um, but tell me, like, did you have when, in your journey? Did you have what was your biggest speed bump that you kind of hit that you're like, whoa, you know? Can I do this now? And then how did you kind of push through? Um, kind of similar to the same question I had, but I'm just wondering more specific. Is there any specific speed bump, if you're willing to share? Um, man, I just imagine like the person who takes a sliver out and the sliver has been in there for weeks. So when it comes out, it's a little gross. You yeah. know, it can be pus or bloody and you got to clean it out so that in order it can heal. And I, I feel like trusting the process of your personal journey it doesn't look a certain way. Everyone's is different. And in my experience, it, there's beauty moments and then there's really ugly moments, you know, because when you're, when you're ready to work through something that has come up, that has shown up, that is ready for you to let it go and work through it, that is where the opportunity happens. There's a little bit of a wrestle and depending what that experience is for someone, how deep, how dark, how long, how hard, it's going to look different for everyone. But I, but I hope that no one fully does it alone so that you don't get stuck there and you keep going. I feel like the bumpiest for me was, and it's also my greatest blessing, was being married. You know, I started my journey a little bit before we got married and a good first part of our marriage was him supporting me and loving me and guiding me through this process. And I feel like um, in those moments when you're going through those things, you're not in a place of, I want to be very careful how I say this. Cause I feel I'm, I'm a very transparent person. Um, like That's what it want. is that, what it is. It's that, the truth. Hey, like that, I got, <laughs> hey, you came to the right place. So just. Um, I just feel like 
um, you're not in a place to love and serve. When you're healing and when it's it's a very selfless, selfish, selfish, not like you're doing something bad, but just it's just a, it's a selfless about you place. And that's what it gets to be. Mm-hmm. And so there's this opportunity where you you want to be rescued. Make this easier for me. Love me through it. Be with me. Hold my hand through it. But there are very specific moments where it's your journey. And I feel like I'm so grateful um, that I really did have a prepared, loving, grounded man because I know that he was stretched. And I'm grateful for God's blessings and favor over our marriage. And I feel like what pulled us through was that I was committed. I was committed to heal. I was committed to enjoy all that I truly wanted from my life. And that gave our marriage balance and it gave it hope and it gave it light so that the hard moments were about it just being hard and difficult. Mm. It was not about our love and our respect toward each other or our marriage or, you know, our union together. And I feel like it was able to be like that. We were able to make it through those moments because again, we didn't do it alone. We had support. We had a village and that made it possible for us to be where we are today in a place of practice, you know, in a place of love and wholeness, but practice moving forward. Right. So definitely your your first husband, right. Uh, Was the one that was just there to support you help you out during your journey. And you started like just a little bit before, right? And so, so he was there with you the, the, I guess those two years you were talking about, right? Those two years. Yeah. And so um, I was going to ask you, did he, because this is probably on some woman's question, right? Or on on their mind right now when they're listening to this podcast is, is I feel that more than ever men are starting to wake up in regards to, I need to catch up with this woman who has chosen to heal herself for us. You know, when you're married, there's no healing for yourself anymore. I feel like it's your healing for us and because it bleeds, you know, negativity bleeds, but also positivity bleeds, you know, Mm -hmm. misery loves company, but also happiness loves company too, you know? And so I feel more than ever, um, that men are saying, Hey, you know what? Like, I don't want her to leave me behind. Cause that there is such a thing that a woman can outgrow a man, give it a year of a woman healing once a week, She'll be a very different woman. And the man is, there's no such thing as sort of like standing still. It's either declining or you're rising. You make the choice every single day. Um, Do you feel like when you were on your journey, did he take his own or was his own journey just like, I'm going to support you? Like, you know, there's no, you know, bad or right thing, but I'm just Mm -hmm. saying like, what did he choose? I'm just kind of curious because there's a lot of people who are listening who are like, my husband's not supportive of me. Or um, he did go on a journey with me too. Like we actually switch off on sessions, you know? Mm-hmm. So how was it with you uh, during the first two years? Um, well, he actually showed me the path to this journey. So he had he had his things that his journey he had started. And, um, and then when we met, I feel like that's why he resonated with me. He He's always said to me to this day that, he heard my heart and my drive and my passion. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I feel like he he started it and I was kind of, no, because I had never met a man right. like that, you know? And so, um, and then I started mine, but then there was this off balance. Cause at first I feel like he thought, well, I met someone you know, because he had the opposite experience, you right. know, he dated women that were not at that level yet. Right. Right. And so I feel like he had this idea of I met someone that has that same desire as I do. Right. But I don't think he quite realized that I was way at the beginning, you right. know. And then there was this off balance at first where I feel like he had to be patient and wait and really believe that it would work, I, I would think. Um, I don't want to fully speak for him, but... Um, and then thankfully we, we continued that journey together and, and we're still on that journey together today. I feel like that's one of the things that I love about our our relationship is that we both are always open to keep learning and keep healing and keep being better and teach our children in that space growing up. Something we learned a little bit more older, um, 
Now we get to continue to practice it, to live it, and then to help our children grow into it. Yeah, that's awesome. Because I feel some of the greatest children that have ever been born on this earth are the ones coming out now, you know, because they've just been on the other side for so long, learning and studying about humanity. And then, boom, they're here for these final days. So I always look at kids who I'm like, I'm like, ADD or or indigo child, you know, careful with that, you know, <laughs> um, literally, because it's just there's there's just so much um, sort of this is how a child should act, you know. But what if that kid has high spiritual sensitivity, you know? What are we going to diagnose them that some person just wants to give them medication, or is there something innately inside of them that they just need to grow and control? Similar to like um, Superman when he came here. I'm just, I can't believe I'm using uh, DC Comics, but Superman when he came here. Um, he there was this really cool scene in Man of Steel. I don't know if you watched that movie, but there, there was that part where um, he was seeing everyone's bones and everyone's muscles, you know, like his eyes, you know, and so he couldn't control his powers yet. See, our society would have labeled him as handicapped mentally in some sort of way or, or, or you know, banish them, you know. But um, he actually was going to save the world. I mean, he was there. And if they just controlled it, he harnessed his power. He could be a very powerful person. He became Superman. You know, and so I feel like there's a lot of children out there who are being highly misunderstood. Uh, and if um, we actually attuned our eyes to see that they're just more elevated spiritual beings, we would treat them as such and help them to grow. So our children, I mean, I don't want to go too public about it, but our children have special gifts that have, have boggled my mind where it's just it, – it, it validates that there is a God. It just completely does. And I, and so my goal, which I've never had before, is to be this very supportive person and say, hey, you know, tell me about that. It's like, that's a gift. You know, you can pray to kind of keep bringing that out and exuding that for you. And you're, you're not weird at all. This is this is a beautiful thing you have, you know, and I want you to grow it. And I think you'll appreciate it in the future, mm-hmm. you know? A lot of children don't have that. They have the adults like, what are you doing? Like, why would you, you saw something, you didn't see anything. You know, it's like, they're just that way. Um, what's a, with with your children, for example, what's a really great lesson that you've taught them that you're like, this is something you guys have to know, you know? Because I feel like in my mind, I'm like trying to like plan out their, they're like early studies of like emotion code 101. Like that's in fourth grade, you know, frequencies. Like, you know, I feel like in my mind, that's even more important school at home than their, you know, what's X plus Y, which I still haven't used yet, um, you know, to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, but what's what's one lesson that maybe sticks out in your mind that you're like, I really want my kids to know this. This is super important. I wish I would have known this when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, what's one thing that comes to your mind? Well, my baby's 14 months, <laughs> so I'm still in the space of the cuddles and the loving and, um, and what I, I feel like my prayer over my son, um, the little that I can, I teach so far in his age and his learning is just, um, knowing that he has a soul and a spirit that he's not just physical Right. Um, I feel like when I ground and when I speak to his spirit, I feel like that mindfulness of that connection to God and connection to his spirit allows me to understand, I feel like, where that cry comes from Mm. or where that um, anxiety comes from or um, even the process of co-sleeping and the process Mm. of of weaning off nursing and and the little harder things that we've transitioned to have a more um, balanced, I feel like, home routine. Um, I feel like if I would have just done... Um, and, and there's no right or wrong. I feel like in parenting, oh my goodness. Very sensitive like, subject. <laughs> it is. We're all learning, you know? Yeah. And so I feel like this is, I feel like I have a really great moms that I look up to because I'm always like, okay, I don't feel like I'm doing, I don't know if I'm doing this right. <laughs> but I um, I feel like something that I, I like to practice because it was done for me mm-hmm. is, is just like, I feel like if you take co-sleeping, for example, there's a training program that I went through, you know, and it was very A, B, C, D. But I feel like because I understand emotion and the meanings we create and how we hold them and how we perceive them and that process, I feel like I was more gentle and I, w- I, I trusted myself not doing it exact. 
Because right. I'm that kind of person that I would have want to follow like everything to the T to know that I was doing everything right that I could possibly do for mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. But I feel like um, giving space for more of that spiritual soul to soul connection mm-hmm. and looking behind the physical and being aware of his feelings, even though he can't express them necessarily in a way that I can understand them quickly, he's always communicating with me. And mm-hmm. so I feel like that really assisted the process of him transitioning from cuddling in bed with me till he was nine months and into his own room and in his own bedtime routine. That's awesome. The, it reminded me what you were saying um, of like General Patton that talked about how um, in the military, you know, you and I, I went to JROTC, so I didn't go to like full on military, like, you know, ROTC, but um but I learned this one thing that said that, you know, you you set these sort of parameters in war, you know, and like, this is what you do. You flank this way, you do this. But um, but in times of war, you know, there's there's a lot of room for improvisation that because this might not go as planned and you need to move forward. You know, so when you were talking, it kind of reminded me of like you were um, the intuitiveness that happens between the bonding of between a child. It's like it's like there has to be leg room for the, the the mom and the little one to bond and the special power that's innate in you that was like given to you from above uh, this intuition, you know, or even the spirit talking to you, the Holy Ghost telling you, hey, your son needs this or hey, your son's in danger. You know, um, I think that's where the mom grows and it's spiritually with the child, you know, and so mm-hmm. I think that's really important. Um, I also feel um, one of the, the things I always love to bring up, and I'm glad that you brought up the soul one. That's that's such a that's so powerful. You said that because um, there's there's a really great quote that I like. I don't remember the person who said it, but it said that um, you know Jesus Christ never had an identity crisis. He knew who he was before he came here. He knew who he he was. So he knew who he was before he came here. He knew who he was when he came here, and he knew where he was going. And, and when you're that liberated, then you can serve, you know? And for me, I feel like a lot of people, the reason why they, they can't receive that joy in the service is because they don't know who they are yet, you know? And so um, for me, I wish I would have known when I was a kid, like, where where did you come from? You know, like, why are you here? Where are you, go- where are you going? Um, because even if you're in your healing journey, and but you don't know that major component of why you are spirit- going through a human experience and why this is so important to, to moving forward, that your progression goes beyond your death. I think it's like, you could probably question yourself. Like, I know this healing is great, but it's like, what are the, what's the end game of this? But now it's like, when you realize where we came from and, and you know, obviously you and I both, um, well, you grew up in the gospel. Um, I think it's so, I didn't grow up with the, oh, okay, you're a convert. Okay. Yeah. So you and I are both converts. Um, I think it's, it's interesting that like how much that's gold. Like for me, I, I would have everything stripped away from me, like, and become completely homeless and just eat, you know, a small crumb every single day. But if I knew why I was there and where I came from, where I was going, I would figure out a way to like, to regain my true identity here on earth, you know? But I feel like there's so many people out there lost going like, okay, yeah, I've had lots of trauma. Like, why do I have this trauma? Like, did I choose my habitation? Like Paul talks about in the scriptures, you know, did I did I choose this life because it would somehow progress? You know, a weird, a weird thought that, that came to me right now is similar to the fact that, you know, people go like, I there's no way I would have chose my abuse for my parents. Like, you know, there's no way I would have chosen that. But what if, what if you did choose it then you're not a victim and you, maybe you wouldn't have gone through an accelerated healing journey if you didn't go through certain kinds of abuse. I think about that a lot. It's 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 so powerful if you think about that because then anyone right now who's thinking you're a victim, I, w- I want you to flip your mind and just say, what if I chose this these parents here before you came here? And I know that's true because um, I'll say this one last thing and maybe you can share your your thoughts on this is um, in the body code, there's a thing called the preconception trapped emotion. I kind of mentioned to you earlier um, and that you can get, you can accumulate trapped emotions before you came on earth, right? Um, and what's interesting is that there's two big ones that Dr. Brad used to talk about. One was grief and the second one was fear. And so grief was very common that you created yourself in the spirit body because you're grieving your celestial home that you 
that you came to earth and you left your home. There's a grieving emotion that you came to earth with. Fear is fear of impending life on earth. So those are the two common ones. So think about it. Why would you have fear of impending life on earth unless you saw a glimpse of what you're going to experience in this life or who you were choosing as parents? Just because you chose them and it's going to be the best for your growth doesn't mean you're going to have peace while you're going down your your little tunnel that you created. So maybe there was fear going like, okay, here I go. This is the parents that I chose that supposedly they're going to help me grow, you know? And so um, what are your thoughts on that? that? The thought about like, Maybe we chose where we we um, kind of uh, started off, and if you didn't start off there, would you have would you be on this journey where you're happier now than somebody who maybe had just a regular life, no, not much trauma, whatever? There's no real kind of push to like grow in an extensive state and to serve others. So you're not even just you're not only growing, you're growing and serving people. Would it? Would you? Would that person come out if you didn't have? your past to grow from. I know you've probably thought about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's amazing about where we at right now is that I feel like this is the very moment that keeps you in the circle of trying to heal every single moment mm-hmm. and finding the meaning and the why into full liberty and wholeness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was the revelations, very key revelations that happened in this very moment we're talking about that got me to where I am today. And I just want to share one quick experience. Sure. So I was um, way in the process of different types of um, NLP, are you familiar with NLP? Neuro Linguistic Programming. Uh huh. Exercises um, at this particular time um, with, um, what do you call it? Um, it was like a type of coaching I was doing with this company, and it was a lot of um, mindfulness and a lot of goal, um, goal setting going on. And so I was doing those two things at the same time. And so I was in this rut of, um, Going So there's this one exercise they teach you in neuro-linguistics program reprogramming, and it's called Timeline. And this tool was very transformational for me. And it's mainly used with hypnotherapy for PTSD patients. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're going into this timeline. You're going into these specific memories in the past. You're recalling them. You're dropping in light from heaven. You're clearing it. You're transforming it, right? Right. And so I had a little bit of... I don't know if you call this confusion or I was just kind of in this rut of um, I wanted to find my purpose and I wanted to find my why and my meaning of why I went through all of those things. Mm -hmm. I had cleared a lot of things. I had understood a lot. I had seen a clear vision of what I wanted and where I wanted to be, but I couldn't get clear on who I was supposed to be. And it was blocking my career choices and because I had this pool of I went through those things because I'm, maybe I'm supposed to go help children who are being trafficked or I'm mm-hmm. supposed to help women who have been abused or I'm supposed to write a book mm-hmm. and I'm supposed to write a story of every trauma that I went through because that's why God would make me go through it, right? Right. And so that's where I was. And there was this one, okay, so I kept going back into timeline with my kumu, my teacher in Hawaiian. I kept going back to this moment. And so I kept going into this specific memory where the most sexual trauma happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I kept going into that room thinking that I was going to find my purpose there. Mm. I was going to find my answer because on this other leadership side, I was doing this homework and different things to figure out my purpose and my why and my vision. And so I was doing these two things, right? And they were, they were for a while going hand in hand. And then I got to this place of, hmm, how do I get here when I'm still over here doing all the work? When am I going to be done with, with going through all the yucky work? Right. You know, when is enough enough? Like, when is it complete? Like I know healing and the the Lord is restoring me through my entire life, right. but when is there like this closure and I can just walk be away. at peace and walk away? Yep. Yeah. And so I was on a coaching call that morning and one of the most influential leaders that I had on my path, um, she, 
she's actually the owner and fa- uh, of this company. And um, she's like, are you open to be coached? And I said, yes. And so I just share what I just shared on this call. And she goes, um, is it okay if I talk to you from a place of God? Because that's my belief system. And I said, yes, it's the same one as mine. She's like, okay. And it, it may sound really simple what happened in this call, but for me, it was like revelatory. It was like the sparks, the light. And from that moment on, I, I, I just got to that place in my life. Mm-hmm. And since that very moment, that plate, that is complete. It was like God anointed it or something. Yep. And it's- Kind of closed the door for you. Yes, mm-hmm. in a very sacred whole way. It's beautiful. And she said to me, if it was true, that you needed to keep going back in there and that God gave you those things, then that would mean that every woman would have to be raped and sexually abused in order to fulfill their purpose. You do not bring God in there with you in those moments. You let him do that. These are the experiences that were part of you in this life Mm -hmm. to grow and to learn. But your purpose, you go to him. And tell me why in that moment in my life, I was going to an abuser. I was going to a dark room, to dark memories, to find light. Right. Why am I going there? And, and I, I don't know why I never understood, because I dealt with it for 15 years, okay? So if you're there, there's no blame, shame, or guilt here. Sure, sure. It's just because I get that I was there, you know? Right. But it's like that clarity of light, her power speaking life into me, and after all the work that I'd done, I received it yeah. without pulling back. Yep. And I, in that moment, it was like this clear revelation came through and my purpose was to love and inspire humanity. And I just wept because I, and she said, your purpose has nothing to do with what you do. You're supposed to be able to do your purpose from your bed, in your room. It's not a title. It's not a place you go to. Mm-hmm. It's between you and God, and it's a gift you've been given. That moment freed me of this need to tell everyone what I'd been through in my life. Right. It gave me the power that I had been looking for to be that owner of that clinic and to fulfill the vision God had given me, to manifest the business partners and the clients, to come from a place of how am I here to serve you, not I need to tell you where I've been Mm -hmm. because that's where I find my personal power, you know, and to become the, the immune system coach and the different services that I provide today from that place of my purpose to love and inspire humanity. I can do it when I don't take a shower and I'm with my baby and I'm just nursing or just at home in our little quiet place. Right. Or I'm in my clinic room and I'm serving or I'm on a phone call coaching a client. Each one of them, I can step into that purpose and has nothing to do with what has happened to me Mm -hmm. and where I've been in my life because I had a choice at choosing what that was going to mean for me and what God had for me. That makes perfect sense. That's such a powerful uh, revelatory experience. Um, Thank you for sharing that. And I think a lot of people, there's there's a saying I love that says that People are pushed by pain until they're pulled by vision, you know? And I feel like that's kind of like the, you're like, I'm done being pushed by pain. I'm going to be pulled by vision now. And 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 then God is there, you know? And so I think um, another thing that really interested me too, what you were saying, there's a book uh, called Return from Tomorrow. Have you read that book? Mm-mm. So that's one of my favorite books. It I, I could probably read it in one sitting. It's probably like, you know, 80, 90 pages. But um, I, I was reading it and it's um, it's somebody who went into a coma for 20 minutes and he was able to see all these different things, um, you know, in, this, in the spirit world. And then he came back, you know, and it's a beautiful journey. Uh, later on, some missionaries knocked on his door and he got baptized, which was kind of cool. Um, but anyway, I used to work at Siegel Books. So I, you know, I spent 90% of my checks on like reading books and like 10% on ramen noodle. But um, <laughs> in that book, I just love it. There, there's three times I cried in that book. And um, there was this beautiful moment. And this, this is probably like, I want to piggyback on what you just said. Um, about like, it, like, where's my title? You know, it's like, it's like, there's something even deeper than that, you know? And, um, 
so what happened was is that he actually came face to face with the Savior, mm -hmm. and he didn't know the Savior at all. He didn't. I don't, I don't think he was even a Christian, but like he said that his spirit had this inclination to bend its knees to someone, and that he felt inclined to to bow down and worship this person, and um, Jesus basically told him to stand up, and he said. Who uh, he said his name, and he says, "Who have you been in this life?" It was like the first question that came to him, and that just boom, just ex for me, it was so emotional to me when I read that because he didn't say, "What were you doing? How much money have you made? What, where, like, what kind of car do you drive? Are you uh, are you biggest on TikTok?" He didn't say that. He just said that simple words is like, "Who have you been?" And like, are are you a are you someone that within your fibers of your bones have somehow acquired faith, hope, and charity in your life, which is, you know, basically I feel like our mission in life, wherever you are, whatever religion you are, whatever, it's like our goal is to exude charity, you know, and just the, the love of, to spread the love of God, however we can with the gifts and talents we have inside of us. But if you haven't figured out what your mission is or your passion is, I think one of the the standard foundational things is like, are you a good person? Are you are you someone that can give love to people? And it makes sense if you've he, if you've done more healing on yourself, it's easier to give love to others. You know, like you can't really give love if you've never received it. You know, so when people go, Emmanuel, why are you so interested in reading scriptures? You know, I, and I love reading scriptures. I'm like, these are God's love letters. These are God, and this is love letters to all of us. To, this is how a celestial being loves us and it's his hand is always out like saying come back to me come back to me if you read about someone if you read about a celestial being's love guess what you give celestial love to others because it's what you read it's what you consume you know uh they say trash in trash out um and so that's when when you were talking it just kind of reminded me of that of just like who are you being you know and that person was kind of calling you out saying like you could do it from your bed you know just like but like you're the character that you build, you know, that's what, that's what truly matters, you know, and, and kind of the hang up on like, have I found my mission could get very depressing for a lot of people, you know? So I always tell people like, I know that you have a gift and talent out there and God wants you to be happy. So find your happiness, like follow your joy, follow your happiness, I guarantee you're using your gifts and talents in there somewhere you know, but, um, but God wants you to be happy. He doesn't want you to be miserable at some 40 to 40 to 40 job, you know, where you're like working for someone else's dream. Maybe that is your thing, but there's always something that it's like, how could you grow as a person and love your life? When you wake up, you're just like, I can't wait to help people with this love that I have, you know? So thank you for sharing your story there. Um, so now let's, let's talk about, let's kind of switch gears a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, someone has a, lo a low immune system, you know, um, and they come to you, like what type of people kind of come to you um, that you're like, this is the ideal client that I, I really feel like these are the people that I typically serve. I'm just kind of curious. Mm -hmm. People with autoimmune. Autoimmune, okay. Because they are a perfect example of the immune system. Part of it literally is attacking a part of the body. It's attacking the thyroid. If you have Hashimoto's, it's attacking the colon. If you have colon colitis, Crohn's colitis. Um, and so we want to get the immune system from attacking itself to working for you. Right. Because did you know that you could influence the intelligence of your immune system? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> you could literally raise it. I right. mean, you've seen it with emotions. Sure. Right. You get the body from that place of a flight or flight you know, that constant need to save itself, to be aware of everything. And you put it into homeostasis, into love, into peace, into being grounded, and the body starts working well, you know. But after, if you look at it on the emotion side, after so long of being in those places, the cells have damaged, you know, there's inflammation and, and not just through emotion, but we're exposed to so much right now in the air, in mm -hmm. the food, in our 5G, in our Wi-Fi. And so we literally have regimens and molecules that help the immune system respond mm -hmm. at a 400 capacity. We're literally working within the white blood cells to get people out of that disease space. Mm -hmm. that, that's really interesting too that you were mentioning like 
the toxins of our, you know, like the modern day society, you know, um, we had a guest here. Um, I think I told you about him, Dr. Scott Werner, who's an herbalist. And, um, he was mentored by, uh, St. Germain for five years, you know, an ascended master, you know, which is kind of, you know, you might think that's a little out there, but, um, if you knew how he knows about herbs, it's, it's like, if you see him talk about it, it's really amazing. But he, talked about kind of like raising your DNA to get a 24 strand DNA and how we have a lowered version of it. Mm-hmm. And St. Germain gave him the, this, these words, like basically a three sheet piece of paper. I've been reading it every single day mm-hmm. and it, it like basically assists your, your DNA to basically create a 24. You have to do it for 144 days reading this, these statements. And then all of a sudden your DNA starts creating a 24 strand DNA. And I, and one of the things that it says there, it says, you know, protecting us from nanochemicals and um, just things from the outside, you know, um, chemtrails from, from above, you know, mm-hmm. um, non, non-nutritious food coming from below, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, smog, pollution, um, heavy metals, pathogens. I mean, there's just... Are, are I can see why when you when I walk around like a Walmart and like eighty percent of people like are dealing with some form of like obesity like we are not doing well nutritionally you know mm-hmm. and like and and then we're so stressed out we 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 fight or flight at work and then we come home and then there's fight or flight at home I mean it's like you're we're constantly running from a bear you know um, what what is it in in your mind you said you start people with some sort of regimen you know so. How do you do that? Do you do you do muscle testing to see, okay, what where do we need to start first? Um, or like how do, how does your like what would a typical procedure look like? Starting with analyzation of what is happening here, then to I need you to put put you in a certain regimen. Like what does that process look like? Mm-hmm. So we start with the free consultation. Can it be anywhere from 15 to 20, 30 minutes? And I have a health assessment that I utilize to kind of help guests a couple questions from sleep, from energy, from pain, things like that. And then um, we muscle test. And in this conversation, we're really finding out, okay, have you been diagnosed with something? Where are you? What are, like, what are you looking for? What are you struggling with? And as we utilize different tools, we begin to formulate a regimen. And we're working specifically with um, targeted factors in the immune system. And the type of tools that we use can access and activate the immune system within two hours. We start working with natural killer cells. Mm-hmm. How, what, what you say with certain products? Like, are you talking mm-hmm. about um, like vitamins or herbs or what, what are you using? No, mainly? so this molecule. It's not a hormone, it's not a supplement, it's not an oil. All things have their place, and those are amazing. Um, these things are, a, um, it's a mother's nature's first source of, of colostrum. And so we're taking transfer factors. Have you heard of transfer factors? No, educate me. Okay, so transfer factor is a molecule within colostrum. So okay. we leave behind all the allergens. Oh, okay. Okay. And we're taking the memory markers of an immune system. It's what a mother transfers to their firstborn is oh, that okay. immunity. Yeah. And so we work specifically with, they, they, they were designed in the forties. Um, we work specifically with the transfer factor molecule that our body makes and it's already within our immune system and we give the immune system more of it. Right. And so there's different things that, um, how, that are how much do you give to someone depending on their, like, do you know how much the quantity is that someone needs or is it all the same that you give to someone and then you kind of test them afterwards? How does that work? So it kind of varies a little bit. Um, there is a sameness within, within each person, but there's a shift also. Right. Um, in fact, I got a phone call before I came here, um, from one of, one of my clients and he had um, Crohn's colitis and the type of inflammation that he's had over the years causes the colon to really swell up. So his immune right. system attacks his colon, right? And it really began to swell. We, he usually when it does that is right before you get diagnosed with colon cancer. Mm. And so um, he's on different medication, he's done different therapies, different emotional things. He's done, he's done it all. And so He's like, I can't get out of this disease place. So that I started working with him two months ago. Mm-hmm. He's a perfect example of um, we went slowly. We muscle tested and his body tested to do one capsule of something, then another capsule. Then, then by the end of the month, he was doing the full regimen. Because one of the things that we do is 
you need a nano factor effect in the immune system. You need a modulator. Right. And if you have, if you're familiar with autoimmune, you understand that you need, it doesn't have modulation. It's either very hyper or very hypo. Right. So we have this nano factor that actually modulates the immune system. We can stop it from attacking itself. Right. And then when we introduce these molecules into the white blood cells and we raise the IQ of the immune system, its ability to respond and find pathogens and get them out of the body, mm. he had a colonoscopy and today they reviewed the tests and he said you're 95% in remission. We were literally looking at cancer. That's great. With, that's two months of working with him and that's, that's awesome. how we work with educating that immune system. And um, we made a shift tonight because he's a little bit stronger. He cut back 25% on his medication. His goal by next month is to be completely off of it and get him fully into that place of healing. Well, when you have Crohn's, it takes five years for them to tell you if you've been healed. But along the way, they tell you, they call it remission like cancer. Right. And so um, that's what we're going for. And that's an example of what really happens with all of my clients. So within five years, there could be like, there could be a relapse, right? That's what and the science. That's what science says, science. right? Mm -hmm. with, with, and the, if you're not watching this, you're, this is the podcast, we did the quotation bunny ears. But, um, but within those five years, how much does his lifestyle affect the possible in relapse of the inflammation that he was having in his colon is it it doesn't if you are taking the the molecules that specifically communicate with your immune system our immune system is supposed to be able to recognize respond and remember right. to threats mm -hmm. for example i had a couple different allergies i couldn't eat milk i couldn't eat dairy i couldn't eat gluten if i did um one of the autoimmune diseases that i had affected my thyroid and so I would swell up, my the ends of my fingers and my toes would burn, my muscles would twitch, I would feel really, really cold, yeah. and I was in a lot of pain. Mm. And so those were my flare-ups if I ate the wrong things. Today, I, I sometimes take my, <laughs> my regimen with milk. Right. I don't have any allergy. Great. My body was supposed to be able to respond to that pathogen that's in gluten, and it's supposed to remember it through the memory markers and be able to respond to it properly. And my body adjusts, mm -hmm. but that's not what our bodies do. Right. And so, um, or so you're saying you're, you're basically saying an immune system, once it's trained, it stays trained. Yes. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense. And, um, yeah, I think one of the, um, I, I was going to ask you, do you have any experience with people who don't have a gallbladder? And perhaps they constantly get IBS uh, symptoms. Um, you know, they have to take obviously like ox bile for you know supplements. But have you um, people who have constant IBS issues? Do you have any history with those type of people? Yes. So, um, we have a family of transfer factors. Okay, meaning that whatever system we target in the body, we're doing it with the help and the signal of the immune system. Mm -hmm. So as we raise the IQ of your immune system, we start to shift the direction of where you need it, right? For me, I needed it in fertility, got pregnant seven weeks later. For you or for someone you know with the gallbladder, we have digestive enzymes, we have, and like seriously, this prebiotic is essential for someone who has allergies and really anything got related. So our um, prebiotic is a pre and a pro together. Right. It's powder. It's not a capsule because I used to take probiotic looking for the 200 billion trillion, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> and that's because most of it dies. So by right. the time it's in your, in your gut, you're probably using 25% right. because the saliva kills it. The acid in the esophagus kills it. But by the time it gets to the stomach, you're using very little. Right. That's why there has to be so much of it. Mm. And so the pre probiotic that we have has its powder and you put it in your mouth, kind of like pixie dust, like oh, yeah. that that rocky kind yep. candy yep. and it has beetlets in it and it has a hundred percent delivery to the colon. This is a little, um, TMI, but hopefully a woman out there will be grateful for it. After a baby, sometimes you get a hemorrhoid from all the pushing. Right. I tried many, many, many things and I could never fully get rid of the hemorrhoid. Mm -hmm. It was pretty painful, pretty messy to go to the restroom. And, um, I had it for about 10 months. 
I got on the probiotic with the with the factors and the molecules for two weeks. Day four, it shrunk, and I could go have a bowel movement without bleeding. Right. Two weeks later, it was gone. I had to literally touch because I was like, no way. I didn't hurt. I didn't have to cry. I wasn't sweating. There was no blood on my paper. And it's been like that. And now I, I used to have a bowel movement once every other week. It's not, never been. I've always hold on my trauma in my gut. Right. That was the most affected area for me and my hormones. And um, an example of that probiotic and how effective it works, that within those two weeks, I literally saw that it delivered all the weight of my colon. Wow. And so with the gallbladder missing, we have digestive enzymes and that probiotic that helps solve why did the gallbladder even go bad in the first place? Right. You know, it was probably taking too much blunt of the work mm -hmm. and it wasn't evenly spread out. And so by giving the body the necessary products to process and digest your foods mm -hmm. that won't be an issue is that something that you would consume before um a meal or after a meal does it does that matter at all um because you know how similar to ox bile you know it's like you want to take it bef like before you eat and then you mm -hmm. kind of consume it um is it something you take like once a day or mm -hmm. twice a day how, how what was your regimen in that because i've heard of the not all probiotics are created equal mm -hmm. um I also learned with, for example, like CBD, you know, like it had oil in it, right? Mm -hmm. And then like the body's like, why do you have oil in your body? You know, you're going to flush it out. Mm -hmm. So so it really didn't kind of like, as a, it's not as effective as if mm -hmm. it was water-based. There's like higher consumption of the body. Mm -hmm. So I understand that whole like, like your body has a tendency to be like, you don't need this, throw it out. But hey, that was actually the magic stuff you needed in there. So now mm -hmm. it's all gone. It's not potent as, as it used to be. Um, but yeah, what what is what was the regimen? Were you just taking it once a day? Would you take it like after a meal? Like how was it with you with the pre and pro? Like, so it's all in one, right? So the beadlets, the pre and the pro are all in one, and it's set up so that your first month you're taking it every single day. There's not a specific rule as to like when and part of the day you take it. I just like to say, and what always comes out strong in a muscle test is to take it at the end of the night. Mm. because your body's entering into that rest and digest. Mm. You're not producing extra acid anymore. Right. Your body's not in that digest mode. Got it. And so then I take mine and I tell most of my clients to take it before bed. Right. I always muscle test to check because sometimes you get used to giving a certain advice, but then you test them and it's not strong for them. Sure. And so, but most of the time it's test to do it at the end of the night because of that rest and digest mode. Got it. Mm -hmm. That is so fascinating. Yeah. I think, um, the, the immune system, uh, the experience that I've had with it is, is really interesting. Sometimes um, you can you can muscle test to see the percentage of how strong your immune system is from zero to 100. Obviously, if, if it's zero, you're, you know, 30 to 40 is usually like you're, you're dealing with cancer. You're like, you know, but if it's like 60 or 70, it's always interesting how in the body code it says you can only raise it a certain amount, like for say like 25%. Because if you go to 30 beyond, um, you'll get sick, you'll get flu symptoms because your body's just like, oh, we're doing pretty strong over here. Wait, what are all these things doing on here? And it goes into little battles, you know, of like now that it sees everything, it wants to like fight everything up and your body goes into like flu mode, like flu symptoms mode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, so I know obviously like muscle testing is so key, you know, to be able to see what the body can handle and what it can't because everyone's different. And that's what my mother taught me early on is that whenever she would see someone get cured of cancer, you know, um, you know, even though they had less, um, cause you know, she was an oncologist, um, maybe there weren't so many white papers on it or studies on it. And, um, my father used to always get on her case and be like, well, Maria, you know, that's just one case, you know? And then my mom used to say, yeah, but that's one case means that there is hope. We just need to duplicate the same biochemistry and then we can have that person heal, you know, the same way, but everyone's biochemistry is they're, they're all, everyone has a different lifestyle. You don't know what they're, what they're eating, how they're sleeping, how they're stressed out. It's like everyone has a different kind of thing. Um, but I do find it very interesting that the immune system was meant to heal us. You know, it's like, it's like our, it's like our backup healing plan. That's just waiting for us to be activated and to be programmed. Like you're saying. Um, so tell me maybe one of your, we'll end with this. Like maybe what's your favorite story of like a client coming in, probably feeling a little bit on the hopeless side, and you're like, oh, we can definitely work with this and let's get you to this place. And then boom, it happened. Maybe you can share your favorite story that kind of stands out mm -hmm. to you. Okay. So she's become a really great friend. And um, 
she's a nurse, an emergency nurse from LA, and she had COVID long haulers. So she was part of the first responders that got one of the very first strands of COVID. And she was about to be deemed fully disabled. She had been in home for almost two years and um, couldn't walk more than five minutes, um, had really bad um, vertigo and um, couldn't have a full thaw, had brain fog, body achiness, super lethargic. They even tested her for cancer and HIV and AIDS because they couldn't figure out what did COVID affect in her body that her body was literally shutting down. Nine days later, after being on the regimen and the protocol we give, we call it the starter kit, um, that we formulate, um, she was cleaning her house she said she was working on her house for seven hours because she couldn't stop. She put music, she danced, she moved, and now she's sharing it to everyone. And I was just talking to her yesterday, and um, I always like to check in on her and see her update. And she's just not the same person. And she just returned back to the same hospital with her team at the emergency, um, back to being a nurse. And um, her cat had a UTI and um, was not responding very well to the medication. And so she gave the cat the molecule. And one hour la later, the dog stopped, I mean, the cat stopped spazzing out and the UTI was gone. A couple hours later, she went to go get him checked. And so the immune system, whether an animal or a human, it is the same M immune system and how it responds, the job of the immune system. And so it's safe to give to a one day old baby. It's safe to give someone that is really sick or an animal. And so she is one of those stories that keeps me going. And that energy, that love and then I see it again for someone else and for someone else and something else. And I'm constantly being amazed at what these molecules can do in the immune system and, and how, like you said, some immune systems, if we get it from that low percentage mm -hmm. to the, the, the how we could have it, the person can have that flu-like healing crisis. We know it's a good one but it's sucky to go through sure. and not everyone's going to understand that it really is that healing process. Right. And so the first month we're really gradually raising it. Right. And even in that gradual raising, a lot of symptoms stop even from that little bit of function. And then after a period of a couple months, we can raise it up to four over 400%. That's amazing. And, and it's interesting that you say that because I feel, um, when I used to work with uh, clients and um, we would work on something, let's say it's like their stomach, like they would always have like maybe um, acid reflux or something, you know, I would work on them. And then maybe there was another layer of healing that needed to be done later on. But it's so fascinating how the body would give you a preview of what's to come. You know, so it's almost like as, as, as soon as your body's starting to heal, it's almost like kind of like a, they're like the body's nudging you saying you're headed in the right direction. You know, and, and so for a moment they might, for example, I knew a guy that was working on his heart wall, the trauma around his heart. And for a day, he felt like he had no depression, no anxiety. And he's had that for many years. And then, and then it kind of came back a little bit. Um, and then he was like, oh, I thought I was like free of it. I'm like, no, that's just your body giving you a preview saying, keep going, like you're headed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the way that you, you do your work so carefully that, hey, you know, I want you to. Um, we need to go at the pace that your body acquires learning and, and, and the way that you are right now. We're going to meet you where you're at is super key, you know, and I guess muscle testing saves us all because, you know, the body knows kind of where you're at, mm -hmm. you know. And so I just think still to this day, doctors haven't fully embraced the idea that your subconscious knows exactly what's going on. But I think more and more doctors are waking up saying, hey, wait a minute, why don't I just see what's really happening and ask the body? You know, so um, maybe you want to share uh, where is your like what location is your clinic? at? I think is your your wellness center, or your clinic. Like where where is that located so people can find you? So I do mo a lot of my work remotely, right? Home visit, um, phone calls, zooms, and then um, I have a few clientele 
from a small little bedroom setup clinic in my house. And so we're, I'm located in Little Valley. Um, but really, most of the time with people, they find that they're comfortable being home. I can send them the things. Um, I coach them. I, I do check-in calls. We do Zooms. Um, that's the beauty that of long distance stuff. Very well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's the future. I mean, really, it's like you don't have to come to my. I, like, I haven't. It's very when I when someone comes into my office, I like I, I kind of stop them. Like, you know, you're getting the vip treatment here because <laughs> i i haven't pushed on someone's arm for a very long time i do everything with my ring and ring method you know mm-hmm. um but it's it's um it kind of humbles me because i'm just like it's so cool that you can work with someone long distance and um i really feel like it shows that god's love has no boundaries you know mm-hmm. when you muscle test someone from afar think about that like just that concept muscle testing someone from Nigeria or from from Europe and seeing what their body needs from afar is just mind blowing to me. I don't think I'll ever get over it, but uh, it's beautiful. It just means there's like again, God has no boundaries. It will find the child, it will find the cat, it will find the lonely person who's hopeless in some random country. And um, I feel like that's what energy medicine's all about. It's just another extension of God's love um, now at this time that we need it the most, you know. And so, um, and like I said, a lot of your people, I guarantee they've been through a, a a truckload of doctors and they're like, this medication isn't working or, you know, I'm losing hope that things are getting worse. Like the guy with the colon issues, like he was a couple of steps away from cancer, you know? Um, and you came in there and said, there's a better way. And it's, and there's a lot of hope if you just kind of stick with your journey, you know? And so, um, so yeah, I'm so grateful for all the work that you do. This is just, you know, new friend to new friend. Just, you know, very grateful that you're out there. Uh, again, this is our first time meeting, but it's like I can tell you're very passionate about your work. Um, and, uh, you know, you might get me to do an introductory call with you because I just – kind of the funny, ironic part about Healing the Healer is like me getting to work with people like you and being like, like let me experience what you guys do over there. And then I just go out there and tell – the world about it and like through social media because i feel like the only thing that stops a healer from reaching the outskirts of more people is just like getting some type of attention somewhere in social media in my opinion mm-hmm. you know and so like for example there's probably the greatest doctor in st george right now and he probably has never done one TikTok or one YouTube video because he just doesn't roll that way. But that doesn't make him less of a, an amazing doctor that could change your life. Absolutely. You know? And so I just feel like if there's any way that I can use this studio or reels or anything, I just want to get your stuff out there and let people know that there is hope. You know? Um, is there any final message you want to maybe share with people? Like what's been on your recently on your mind? You know, what's, is there anything that a special message to people who are listening to you? Maybe this is their first time that they're saying, wow, your immune system can be, you know, trained and uh, I've never heard of this, you know, or, um, or wow, that person had really bad symptoms and they saw the light. I wonder if she can help me out. Is there any, any special message you want to just, you know, that's been on your heart recently to people that maybe who are dealing with stuff uh, right now? That there's hope. And what a gift to have people like you and these services and these channels to connect us heart to heart. That there are people like you and I who really are real, who wake up every day and pray that we could be a vessel, an answer for someone because we've been there, because we have the tools, because we're committed and excited to be that in the world. And jo- and so sometimes when you're going through it, it, it seems like because you haven't gotten results yet, then maybe that's it, you know? But there is so much light and possibility out there. And I pray that I get to serve and I get to work with those that are ready and that I could truly support, get to where they want to be in their health journey, whether that's with me and you together, and and that people truly begin to believe and discover that that there are people ready to, to help them jump to the other side of claiming their life back and living it to the abundance that they dream of with their families. That's such a great message. I feel 
And I just, I'll just share this one last thing. I used to, um, one of the things that just always boggled my mind, uh, once I, I would ask somebody, you know, what are your major symptoms you're dealing with? And um, they would give me their list of things. I'm like, okay, we got the physical. Let's go to the emotional side. Those aren't too hard for people to find. The physical, because they deal with it every day, and the emotional, because they deal with it every day. The one that's challenging for them, and I get the longest periods of silence, is like, what if we get you to ground zero where you don't have any of these anymore? What do you want to attract in your life? What do you want to, how high do you want to fly? And it's just so strange. It's always this long silence going like, and then I have to kind of break the silence and say, it's been a while since someone's asked you that because they're so busy trying to swim and they've been drowning that they don't even know what it feels like to fly anymore. You know, they just, and and that's what, you know, we were kind of, we weren't here to just survive. We, we were here to thrive. Mm-hmm. And, and, but, but when you're too long in the survival mode and someone comes and talks to you about this thrive dream, they go, you're an alien to me. I don't even know. I can't even think about what I'll be in five years because I'm too busy thinking about how I was suffering yesterday and today, you know? So to piggyback off what you said is like, we don't want to take you to just th- just survive and where you're like ground zero. Like I think what you do is you're, you want people to like thrive in their life, you know, to enjoy life in every aspect of their life and that it is possible, you know? And so, um, so I'm grateful for all that you do and I'm grateful for your services that you provide. Um, and um, we're going to make sure that we put all your information on the about section. So if anyone is interested in, in, um, in what you do, well, they'll, they'll have access to your, your platform and, and uh, your, your schedule and things like that. And so um, I'm so grateful for you being here. You, you added great insight to me. I learned a lot about um, the immune system with you being here. And I'm grateful that you were to, able to share your heart, also kind of where you came from. And um, yeah, I look forward to um, getting this out there so people can know about you. So thanks for being on here. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.